I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger Bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. Onyx Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. Pulsar. Image. Quality. We're back season six of The Last Stand. Although you guys are watching this in the fall, we're actually late season coyote hunting. It's the first part of February, prime breeding season. I killed a couple coyotes the other day that were in heat, so, um, you know, should be perfect, you know, conditions for calling in pairs, triples, maybe some quads. Um, you know, the go-to today, we're, we're hunting these big sandhill ranches, big, big chunks of land. Um, you know, over the last six weeks, we've been snowed in out here. Access has been, pretty much non-existent but it's it's melted down enough now that we can get around and you can get to, to parts of these ranches like I said that people haven't been to for a long time so that should be good should help us get into where we want to go and, and and make the stands we need to make I mean the game plan I think we're just going to cover ground uh, you know probably be pretty aggressive on the the sound sequences more coyote based sounds the coyote pup distresses the coyote fights some coyote vocals some howls and things like that um, but, you know, I'll probably throw in a little rabbit here and there, too, and see what happens. But uh, first stand, we're going to slip in here. Matt killed some coyotes here earlier this winter. But we're going to slip in over these little hills and kind of pop up over a big meadow. And uh, right now, the wind's not blowing. It's supposed to blow a little bit today. So hopefully we can take advantage of some light wind early on and, and kill some and then, you know, grind a few out later in the day. But seems about perfect right now. Let's go. Yep. sit here that's that good well there's Matt right there never mind yeah that Matt can kill that right there so we're good I think let's just tuck in here if you want to sit here okay, I'll sit there yeah one of the one of the great aspects of using an e-call with a remote is, is walking a call out and getting it away f from where you're gonna sit so obviously the coyotes attention's on the sound but one of the great things about doing this, once I decide I'm gonna put the call there, I turn around and look back to where we're gonna sit. I'm basically giving myself a coyote's eye view of what our stand's gonna look like. You know, Matt and Ricky had set up over here and they were up on the skyline, so I was able to get on the radio and tell them to come down off the hill. But then, you know, I can't even see Wade hiding up there, so I know we're sitting really good when we get a coyote coming in. We should get him right in our lap. first stand here in the Nebraska sand hills. We're sitting on a big meadow on an alfalfa pivot. Got a bunch of choppy hills off to our right. The rancher's been feeding cows in here down towards the end of this meadow. I've been seeing quite a few coyotes in here, so. Matt's tucked around the right side of us, kind of covering, you know, if anything comes out of the hills. Wait and I can kill them if they come across the meadow here. But this time of year, one of my favorites to start off the stand with when it's not real windy is Psycho Serenade. It's got some howling, but it's also got a bunch of yipping and fighting and scrapping in it as well. Yeah, this country's not so, it can be overwhelming. Obviously there's, you know, a lot of places in the country you set up, you know kind of exactly where the coyotes are going to come from. And this stuff, you're just making an educated guess because, you know, we have a meadow over there. We have some rough choppy hills here. I mean, it's late morning, so we'd think they might be up in the hill, but they could still be down on the meadow. So you really just have to cover everything. So 
we're going to get up a little bit high, not too high, they kind of skyline us, but just high enough that we have a pretty good vantage point. But I'm going to run the call way out, and hopefully we can get him down into this bowl right here. Sometimes they even stop on their own, but he blended in really good. I don't know. It was hard to see him, but luckily we had enough play there that he got in close. We got some footage of him. Pretty coyote. Yeah, pretty one. I knew, I knew she was a little dinky one. Yeah, she is a pretty little coyote, isn't she? Yeah. You know. What a lot of people don't understand, this time of year it is February, it's breeding season, but not every coyote comes into heat. Yeah. You know, this is this year's female, you know, she's not in heat, she probably won't. Um, you know, so there's still lone single coyotes that are out here, but uh, no, pretty, pretty coyote, not real big, but it's about as pretty as they get out in this country. Yep. If only she was about 12 pounds heavier, you know. Eight inches longer. See, our good, my good deed was rewarded. I mentioned that, that I had to pull your truck out back there and I just had a good feeling that the coyote gods were gonna reward me with a coyote on my side that time. What happened to me? Well, luckily when I got stuck, the camera stayed in the truck, see, so nobody gets <laughs> to see that. <laughs> All right, we have killed the skunk. Made a little bit longer of a walk. It was hard getting the truck hit. It kind of flattens out a lot down here. But she's got this massive rush bed and just a bunch of reeds out there, thick, tall, three, four foot stuff. Great spot to find these coyotes laid up at. Matt's down the fence line downwind. He actually spotted a coyote walking up the fence line over there about 400 yards through those cows. So we'll keep our eye on that coyote. But the rush bed kind of wraps around the hill. So if it happens, it's gonna happen fast. We're not tucked in real great. I'm guessing the coyotes are gonna peg us pretty quick, but we'll be ready to shoot them when they do check up. He's coming straight in from the cows, Wade. Get ready. all morning for your one opportunity <laughs> and the old gun goes click we had a little <laughs> racking problem <laughs> you, you know it's really cool you know we spotted some coyotes matt spotted one coming in he was up a little bit higher down the fence line covering the downwind and he got on the radios and said got one coming straight out from the tree well he didn't say tree but he said 200 yards it was cool these rushes are just short enough we could see him kind of bouncing through there and he cleared and the great part about it was we didn't have much to sit by up there. Yeah. 
I mean, the sun's behind us. We're just one big black sh shadow up there on the fence. But luckily, the call was clear off here. He was, he was looking hard to his right, and uh, yeah, he cleared right here. Big coyote, big female, no, big Man. male. But yeah, good looking coyote. <laughs> starting our afternoon run we're on stand number nine it's about one o'clock we just stopped and made a few sandwiches wade's only got a couple more hours to hunt with us and then we got to drop him off so he can hit the road back but uh we're gonna try to pick apart a few little three or four stands here before he has to go wind's blowing it you know 15 20 maybe it's kind of gusting a little bit laying down which is good you know the sound's really gonna carry up we've got a big old hill in front of us the goal here is really to draw them out of the hill or kind of on the downwind half of the stand. There's some choppy stuff here, so maybe we'll get them to come down the fence. Matt's sitting behind us, kind of covering that downwind in case something shows up there. But once again, volume is just the name of the game right now. I'm not trying to get fancy with any breeding sounds or anything like that. It's just, I, I think our best chance is just to get volume out there. So I'm going to crank loud sounds like TNT, Cottontail, Schoolyard Brawl. It's only going to be maybe an eight, ten minute tent stand tops and we're out here. Let's let them all clear so we can kill them downwind. Let them all clear. Let them clear that way so they run left. shoot that back one Justin <laughs> oh nice where'd that second one go That one got up, got over the hill. I'm gonna go check. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the crazy thing is the standing shot we had, I must have shanked it, pulled it off the side. You know, those chest on shots sometimes. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to go back. It happened so fast, but I'm pretty sure I had a chest on shot. And if you hit him off in the shoulder, it drops him. And he dropped, so I swung over on the one and got him running right up the hill. And, and then I figured this one was perfect. I figured this one was going to run clear across this opening. Yeah. I figured we get the the hard ones killed up on the ridge first, and <laughs> we finally got this one. <laughs> I never, I never seen, I never seen the back two after you shot the first time, because this one ripped down across here. Because you and I had a plan. We can't see very good to our right, but the downwind side. And I figured, you know, as these coyotes disappeared, I said, let's just let them blow past the call. And then we get, you know, lots of good running shots. I didn't necessarily think they were going to check up so hard and see us. I mean, they, they pegged us down here. Yeah. We're actually thought we were tucked in pretty good. At least the back two did. The lead one didn't. It yeah. kind of came over. It worked out. Two runners. The standard one. Who knows where it's at by now? Is that the female? Female in heat? That one. Female in heat was that lead one, huh? A couple males with her. She's a pretty good sized female. That's typically what you kind of get, you know. A couple males will court one of those females, you know. And heck yeah, that's what we want. Thanks for letting me kill one. Oh, I'm glad you got a chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pumped about this stand. The wind's dying down a little bit. Unfortunately, Wade's not gonna get to witness the coyotes we kill on this one. He had to leave a little bit early. But we got about two hours left. We made a big loop to the north and now 
everything should line up now. We're gonna probably make a series of four or five stands working back to the south right here before dark. Got a lake that kind of wraps around, winds right in our face, got a big hill off to the side, so very good chance something could roll right out. I put the call purposely out 70, 80 yards. Just so if it kind of rolls up this hill, it'll it'll stay out that way and be looking that way, not over here at us. So just like the most part of the day, the majority of the day, I've been just cranking volume. That's been the key. I haven't been real particular on what sound I just getting the sound out there has been more important. It seems like they're hearing it, they're coming, so. Right here, right here. Red call, ready? Right here. Right here, right here, right here. Get him, man. Woo! Got another one right here. Let's let hit the schoolyard brawl here. See if we bring him back. Yeah. You'll kill him right there. I'll wait till he stops breast side. Woo! Nice. Good shot, Matt. Got a baby. We're gonna run up there that kind of that Matt shot over there a couple hundred yards kind of got up we saw him kind of making his way up the hill he's he's hurt pretty good Matt might try to run up there and get him I'm gonna get the truck and we'll loop around but hey you called it baby nice that's what you like dead coyote here call right there he was screaming he come under that shadow he's really hard to see until he broke right here he actually I killed the call he was running so hard I didn't want to have to try to shoot him out of here running but um yeah man Killed the call, it took him 100 yards before he finally checked up. A little two-pointer coyote. Yeah. Pretty male coyote and he's missing part of an ear. That's kind of a cool, mean coyote right there. He's a fighter. Got a shot off, who knows? Pretty dang cool. Porcupine sleeping. <laughs> well, the stage is set for the last stand of the day. About as good as you can ask for other than just the wind. I, I was hoping here at the end of the day the wind was going to die down a little bit. It is a little bit, but it's still blowing maybe 12, 15, but within about 800 yards, we have a bunch of rushes, a bunch of rough sand hills off to our right. Wind's blowing right back hard left here. Got a nice little bowl here. We can see a couple hundred yards. Our hope is that there's multiple coyotes down on the lake. In, in, rushes or just moving the lake bed whatever and they kind of roll over one at a time shooting from back up here in the hills that helps muffle the sound of the shot you're done Nothing better than killing one on the last stand. <laughs> I I was looking too far left, Matt. I saw Matt. He said, coming down. I knew it was coming down. I thought it was coming down the bottom there and actually came over the top and was cutting to the right. I didn't see it until it was clear over to my right here. Luckily, I was able to make just a quick move. That's why, as a left-handed shooter, I always sit on the and cover the right side because it's easier for me to just 
real easy and smooth swing that way. Sure enough, he was just trotting out there about 75 yards. And checked up and down he went. Great day, man. Six coyotes in the truck, put bullets in a couple more that we never found. But one of these days, it's just, you know, sometimes you think late season, you gotta get real creative and you gotta go deep into the, the playlist. But today we killed everything on rabbit, TNT or Lucky Pecker. You know, pretty early in the stand. And it just tells me that we were on coyotes and if we were in their, their bubble, if we you know, four, five, 600 yards of them, they were coming. That was just the challenge today with the wind and the, and the big country. Let's go check it out. Well, man, that was a great day, bud. Tell you what, you know, the, the day started off slow. What did we make, first five stands? Didn't call anything in, we made a move. Rest of the day, it was about every other stand, every two or three stands, we were calling in coyotes. Like I mentioned earlier, some days late in the season like this, you think you gotta get real creative with the sound list, but today, <laughs> rabbit, you know? Wind was blowing enough, I had to get on top of them. Yeah, it, you know, a lot of coyote hunting for me is is probabilities and give and take, and and you know, the wind was the biggest factor we were dealing with today, and I felt like, you know what, we just need volume. I think if they hear it, you know, they'll come, and you know, that TNT cottontail, schoolyard brawl, those are just the loudest sounds on there, so. You know, nothing more you can do in this big country, just crank the call, and luckily the Revolt, Super Revolt, all have a, a huge speaker, tons of volume, which is what you need in this big country when you're calling with some wind, but heck no, great day, man. Appreciate you dragging me around. We'll be back two more days. Uh, we're in the Sand Hills here for three days, so appreciate you guys watching this episode. Um, we're going to be back up north. We're going we're gonna to go about an hour north tomorrow, hunt uh, with another mat, and, uh, but then we'll be back on day three to hunt with Matt again and uh, maybe his boy Dylan will come along and get to watch him shoot some coyotes. So, should be fun, so stay tuned.